So, uh, tell me about this trip to uh, India in this series with your uh, group of supporters. It's it was. Uh, I've been doing tours. I've been hosting tours for a number of years now, mm -hmm. and we came on the last trip here. Uh, I think 2016. 2016, 17. That was the last uh, yeah, that's series of Alistair took overseas as captain. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And um, when this one came along, they asked me to do uh, uh, a couple of test matches, mm -hmm. and it was strange to see so many different grounds that they've used. I've played here. Mm -hmm. I twice when I came in 76 yes. and 81 we mm -hmm. we played South Zone that's right yes. yeah yeah um, so this isn't the same stadium though it's is not it? the stadium that no. was the different one the uh, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium or Lal Bahadur Shastri Stadium okay yeah, that's right okay uh, this, this came up uh, recently I mean, uh, so this is all part of the IPL setup or yeah. Yeah. Or money from that? That's right, yes. True. Mm -hmm. Because the, each association has to have their own stadium. That is what the board is saying. Because they are giving them a lot of financial assistance. So, and not be just running on the government aided uh, okay. stadiums. It's a nice stadium. Yeah. It's a lovely stadium. Yeah. It really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you, uh, I've heard a lot of uh, you from my grandfather who used to call, uh, for follow cricketer. I'm basically from Chennai, but then now I okay. live in Mumbai for a living. Okay. So, John Lever is yes, one of the greats of the 70s and 80s and I also remember when I started to follow cricket keenly that you came back from somewhere to play uh, the last test of the 86 series India tour That's right. and that yeah. was your uh, last test match. That was my last, I, I served three year ban for going to South Africa Okay, okay. Um, and that was really, that was after the last 81 series here yes and it wasn't a great series it was india won the first test match i think and then the wickets were flat 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 boring boring well, boring it really, and both sides were the bane uh -huh. uh, we both bowled at 12 overs an hour which was soul destroying it really was uh -huh. so when the opportunity came uh, i said yes i'd go obviously the financial implications were yeah. for a Fairly poorly paid cricketers in those days. The uh, a modern day cricketer doesn't have those decisions to make, I don't think. So uh, I went over there, did three years, came back, and I got quite a few wickets in county cricket. Mm -hmm. And we got to uh, 86, India was here again, Mike Gatton was captain. Um, he that was said, because India lost, uh, India won, uh, David Gar lost at the first two test matches. India won the series there and then they got Mike Gatting as the captain and you made a comeback. I think he had a word with Gucci who was playing at the time and he said, we're playing at Headingley, mm -hmm. it normally swings around there. He said, well, JK is still getting wickets and one of the better swing bowlers around. Mm -hmm. But I was 36, so I'm watching Ashwin run down there, he's, <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't enjoy the running now either. Um, but it was, yeah, it, I, I was actually... To be truthful, I was more nervous in that test than any of the others. Um, playing at home as well, um, I found it hard work, and we didn't. I got a few wickets, so it, wickets, yeah, it should have should have helped. But I did two feel and four, four and two. Yeah. I did feel very nervous, uh, mm -hmm. and we lost the game. And I think I got sent in as night watchman and got out, so my game was over. That was that was it. Uh, but it was, I suppose, a little bit of a consolation to be asked to play mm -hmm. after three good years playing county cricket. And that's, I suppose, all you can judge our cricket by mm -hmm. at home. And yeah, it was a nice end, really. Is it, is it, is it the same now, uh, uh, the way uh, the teams are picked? And, and we see uh, only the experience of Jack Leach here, but the rest of the spinners just one test before the series it, it began. Is, it is then. worrying. It is worrying. I, I'm, I sort of applaud uh, selectors who, who go with the youngster. You see it done in Australia. You see it done in the West Indies. But our setup was to look in county cricket and make sure they've done well there and. and they go into a test match then with a bit of confidence that they can perform. Mm -hmm. um, just my own, I did eight years or nine years in county cricket 
to sort of earn the privilege to play for England. Mm -hmm. I, I looked at what happened yesterday and there was just a lack of confidence there, I thought. Uh, the batters played brilliantly. I'm not going to take anything away from the batters who scored the runs. But I did think that perhaps we lacked a little bit of experience there. I, and Indians play spinners really well. So it was a double whammy, really. You're, you're a bit of a baptism of fire. I think. You uh, played uh, most of your test matches against India, 10 out of uh, 23 or something uh, against India, 8 of them in India. And you got about uh, 30 wickets in your uh, 20, yeah, 26 wickets in your maiden, in your debut series, 76, yeah. Yeah. 77. So what, what made you uh, click? in these conditions in India? You took twice if I'm, the If I'm going to be honest, it was... Um, Kenny Barrington was the manager. Mm -hmm. We, uh, as England, bring out our own taught balls for the test matches. Say again? We bring taught, the make of ball was taught. Taught. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. And... T-O-T-T? T-W-O-R-T. T-W-O-R-T. Okay. That's the... Now that, it's the Dukes, isn't it? Yes, okay, okay. Yeah, but it was, that was the ball then. Uh -huh. And all through all the opening games, we used a local ball. We used an Indian the ball. SG1? And it swung. Was it SG I, then? I, I think it was... Yes, it was. SG, SG. Okay. Was that Sonny Gavaskar or just... No, no, no. It's, it's, it's a just, Sans just, Perial's Greenland. So there yeah. was an SG. Yeah, yeah. There was a couple of others, but they all swung quite a bit. Okay. And i would had a bit of success with that. And, and he said, do you fancy, if you play... Mm -hmm. Would you fancy? I said, yeah, definitely. And he went to the Indian ball and said, you've made great progress with the balls and um, we'd like to use your balls in the test match. So they said, yes, thanks very much. And when we got to the test, I got the nod to play. And I think we saw three or four different makes, mm -hmm. but that's the one I think we plumped for. The only problem with them was that they... They tended to go a bit soft, yes, yes. so out of shape. Yes. And I think uh, in that particular first innings, I think we might have changed it once or twice because mm -hmm. uh, it had gone out of shape. And then the third time, we got a ball that really swung quite a bit. And uh, we were lucky enough, I was lucky enough to get, uh, get the ball to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it was... I do think that at, at my age then, I'd learned my art as a, a swing bowler, and I was quite happy to come out here. And and they say most places in the world it, it will swing, mm -hmm. although they talk about the West Indies it doesn't. But I, if you look at figures, there's a lot of swing bowlers who got wickets out there. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, once I got out here. I had a reputation of not breaking down, mm -hmm. um, and I like curry. <laughs> yeah, so talking about swing, you know, we have uh, James Anderson still going on and on. He doesn't seem to age or whatever. Unbelievable. What is your uh, thought on him and the uh, bowling combinations that he has had with Stuart Broad? Yeah. And over the years, the general bowling, uh, pace bowlers bowling in pairs, and you have seen yeah. a whole lot of them. You have been part yeah. of of them yourself. Yeah, yeah I How agree. Do you look at it, uh, I think uh, you feel comfortable uh, with the, the guy up the other end and mm -hmm. and I think as well there's this uh, if you've bowled a good over you desperately want if you've bowled a maiden over in particular you desperately want the guy up the other end to follow that up mm -hmm. to build the pressure right. to uh, help you get a wicket. Every bowler likes to bowl six balls at one batsman. Um, and this is why keeping the scoreboard rotating is so important for the batting side. And I think with one day cricket, we see that it, it's more than that. They're, instead of looking for one, they're looking for four. But um, I felt, I, I, I think that Jimmy bowling with Broad, uh, there was a little bit of extra pace from, from Broady. Mm -hmm. And I think he enjoyed that. Um, but once again, the guy mastered the art of swing bowling in swing out swing and in english conditions i think there's there's nobody better 41 it's not easy he is very very fit 
uh, probably one of the fittest guys in the England side. And with the help of physios and training and everything else, you know, perhaps we're going to see people doing that. Although the Australian method and the uh, West Indian, and perhaps over here, players tend to retire a little bit. They've had enough. They, 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 you know, I think probably the being away from home so much is another detraction from, from touring and playing cricket. Uh, but uh, without playing in county cricket, especially for Jimmy, I think that's helped prolong his lifespan as a, as a, he doesn't go back and go into the, I won't say drudgery of county cricket, but the, the day in, day out of bowling. So he's, he's looking, he's fresh every time he comes out. And if we're going to talk about this game, yeah, I think I would have liked to have seen him. That's right, yes. Uh, I, I think as well, uh, dry wicket, um, probably rough the ball up a little bit. I think you'll see a little bit of reverse swing going on, Bomber especially, but I think he could have done that job. Um, I did think Woods was the right man to play because of the extra pace, but there's no pace in this wicket. So I think I would have gone with uh, Jimmy to play in this. How, how, uh, what, what difference does a left arm pace brings to cricket for a team? You being yourself taking wickets. Big. I, I, well, the only reason I think I got so many wickets was the fact that I was left arm. Mm -hmm. I wasn't particularly quick, but batters don't play. And, and going back to, I, mean, I started in 67. Mm -hmm. Going back to that stage, they didn't play left armers. They didn't see enough. And it's a complete. It's not the same as a right arm going around the wicket. It's a completely different angle, and a different method of uh, the bat pad comes into it very uh, quite a bit. Um, I just there was also oh we've got a left arm over. Um, he's going to leave marks on the wicket that a lot of off spinners would like to use. Nathan Lane relies a lot on Mitchell um, Stark. Absolutely, it? absolutely, and and I. I think that also comes into it as well. I know umpires have probably got a bit stricter, and but there's still further down the wicket. There's still a little bit of rough that a left armer can produce. And I was, I never really bowled round the wicket. Um, and looking back on it, I should have done. I think that uh, has also got a place in the game when the slog's on. So you you can tuck people up and get it in here. Um, in my day, tucking people up meant bowling leg stump right up there and stopping them hitting you through the offside. Uh, I have to say Barry Richards had different ideas on that and he used to back away and hit me through the offside. But uh, it was a, a reasonable way of keeping batters quiet. So a great deal of, I think, of, of not enough really not enough left armers around. Australia have had some success with two fine and, and pace as well. Uh, but they don't come around that often. That's right. Who, who you thought was the best uh, among the lot that you have seen or your, when you are playing this? The left armor left arm pacers? Was he Makram? Sobers. Of course, yes. <laughs> No, Akram was was but it so was different. Different spin, so was he how yeah. fast was he? He was lively. He was okay. lively, yeah. But he wasn't Akram's face. And, um, yeah, I think he's got to be he's got to be up there. But I think if you look at the the England setup, um, I don't think we've got a left armer who's got a hundred wickets, which is quite surprising, isn't it? Mm -hmm. so, um, but no, Akram, uh, and I I played against him. Uh, when he played for Lancashire right. and he we had a little chat and he said you swing it with a new ball he said I struggle to swing the new ball right. he said I, I'm happy when it starts to reverse and, and I can swing it then but the new ball I've, is there anything else and we just talked about wrist and grip and where your fingers are where your thumb is on the ball right. uh, it was quite a nice quite a nice chat from, from the great one really how did you look at uh, India as an opposition uh, from, from the days that you played to over the years that you have seen and now that you are leading the uh, fans uh, to on tours? 
How, how have you ever seen the progress of Indian team, India as an opposition? It's been brilliant. Um, I think before I played, there was a question mark of how you would play quicker bowlers. Every pitch here turned, every pitch here was slow. So as soon as you went outside the country, there was um, a big dearth of uh, people that could... To my mind, Sonny Gavasco was the best I played against in that era. But and also dismissed him the most number of uh, times, six times. Sunil Gavaskar, oh, sorry, Sunil Gavaskar, four times you dismissed. G.R. Vishnu, six times. Dilip Saka four times among the dream of Indian batting. I don't, I don't remember all the statistics, but I thought he was mm -hmm. a really top, top player. And then, of course, Tendulkar came along. Right. But at that time, they were starting to produce uh, the top, top players. Mm -hmm. And it's gone on from there. It really has. And I think you know, Kohli speaks for himself. He's one to watch. You pay money to go and watch him bat. Mm -hmm. and, and it's there. And it's a, it's a great um, improvement. I don't know how you've done it. I, I don't... I don't think I'd put it down to the IPL. I think it was before that that it, yeah. it really yeah. came good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you look at the current Indian uh, setup? That you know, uh, Bumrah has a unique action, but still he is uh, very quick. And then you have the other medium pacers coming: Seamus, Siraj, Shami, of course, who is missing this. Uh, yeah, series. Siraj, good bowler. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you got you got the the ones that came to England. They acquitted themselves really well on English wickets. Hit the seam, kept it up, swung it around. It's all about learning, isn't it? It's uh, you've got to get people out of their comfort zone, playing at home. Take them away. It's a different length that you bowl. Right, right. The Australians have to learn a different length when they come to England. We have to learn a slightly different length when we go to Australia. So it's there's enough coaches around. There's enough. Um, there's enough electronic equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a bit of coaching with Middlesex a few years ago. Right. And the, the seam bowlers can come off at lunchtime, mm -hmm. press a button, and a pitch map will come out of where the ball pitches every, every ball they bowl. Mm -hmm. And they can see whether they are bowling the right length or too short or too far. I think that should be the bowler's prerogative. Right. I think they should know mm -hmm. once they've bowled on any pitch the right length to bowl. Right. You shouldn't need, need someone, otherwise mm -hmm. you stop thinking. You That's know, right. it's, it's yes. got to be, and I think the good bowlers do that, to be mm -hmm. honest. How do you look at the, you know, the, there's so much talk of this aggressive batting, baseball appro approach and stuff like that. Would you have approved this kind of approach when you, when in your playing days or how would you have taken to it? They were still attacking batsmen like we all know, but yeah. Bottom was and then Alan Lamb and later yeah. on a few others. But but now the entire world is going that way, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think the uh, the one day game has has taken the break off, has taken the the fear away from hitting the ball, um, and certainly you watch them one day players practicing, and they do range hitting, so they set the uh, bowling machine up at 85 or 90 miles an hour at a certain length and they just mm -hmm. keep hitting it straight. Right. So the, the confidence is that even if you put a man back, I'll back myself to clear him. Mm -hmm. uh, boundaries might be a wee bit shorter. Um, I, I think I'd, I would rather call it positive cricket. I, I, I think positive cricket is what it's all about. and. And pitches that do a little bit, I'm all for. Um, I know, I know, Cole is all for it as well, and, and he's a positive player. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to see um, well the sort of series that I did play in that made me want to give up cricket. But uh, I think everything now, and the good players, they can adjust to those pitches and they can play on them. Uh, if we talk about this game, our first innings was pretty poor and it was a little bit quicker on the first day so it turned a bit quicker mm -hmm. but the if you look at the wickets that fell they were us playing shots instead of doing what the captain did mm -hmm. oh, yes. and, and he if he can play on it other people can play on it and then when you came out you played on it and I think there's there one or two batters and outside looking going 
Yeah, it's not that bad, all right? We know it's going to turn, but it's not that bad. And it's slowed down a little bit, which has made it easier. Um, so you put all those things together, positive cricket, um, makes life hard for the captain you know what are we going to leave a, as a declaration in the old days uh, if you left three or four and over that was good enough yeah. not anymore and and you also had the situation if you you were playing against Somerset or the West Indies and they've got people like Viv Richards in the side what do you leave them but one ball gets him out and then the game fizzles out because there's nobody else now they can all go for it they can all play shots You've, you've got to bowl well. It puts the bowlers under pressure. I know a few bowlers that would have run away from that, mm-hmm. but th- that's the challenge. It, I think I'd love to have played in, in the modern day stuff uh, just for that challenge. Uh, no other reason. The, the money is great, that, that's fine, and they deserve it. Um, but it's just the challenge, I think, and, and playing in front of packed crowds, which is. Ben Stokes as the leader, how does it, is he, what, what separates him from the other leaders that England, England have had and you played under a few captains yourself and later on we had Alastair Cook as a leader, yeah. Andrew Strauss and yeah. Joe Root then he didn't have really yeah. a good uh, yeah. stint as a captain, yeah. now Ben Stokes, so what, what, how, 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 how have the leaders across years been? You know? I think they have, test matches really mean a lot and to lose a test is it means something to you you know it hurts so the the cautious approach I think has been up there for a, a lot of them um, I, I, you know I, I, I sort of got to the situation where I saw England playing well and batting well and then instead of enforcing a follow-on they say no we're bat again right. And the, the reason being, well, the ricket will deteriorate a bit more. But to me, that, that was a little bit negative. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you think, Let, let's have another game. Oh, we'll rest the bowlers. We'll give them a rest. And fair enough. In very hot conditions, you might think that way. But I've seen this done at home as well. Mm-hmm. And I think that just that negativity, um, and dare I say it, you could also lose your job fairly easily um, if that happened but the whole game evolved the whole game started to become more aggressive and I think Stokes has come along at the right time Um, to be fair I've watched test cricket with Joe as captain and I saw Stokes making lots of decisions out there Um, and I think the whole side these days you you look at a game and you see everybody seems to have a, a side opinion and and that's good. Uh, the captain makes the final decision, mm-hmm. and that's down to him. But right. you'd rather have players thinking than just standing out there and mm-hmm. right. to get out this sun at some stage. Uh, so I think it was it was just time for a, a change. Um, Mike Brearley, Tony Gregg seemed to me quite quite aggressive, quite mm-hmm. quite attacking. Mm-hmm. Brears was yeah, good cricket brain. Fletcher, great cricket brain. Um, Gat, good cricket brain. But that's the way we played the game then. Mm-hmm. And, and we've just moved on. Right. Uh, I, 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 one other thing, I think at one stage when Australia were really going well and they had the temerity to say we only need four-day test cricket. And we thought, oh, cocky sods, you know. But um, you look at it now and a lot of test matches do just go to four but it's still exciting cricket and if it goes to five days it's still exciting and we have in recent times seen the test go to the last session almost to the last hour or even to the last half an hour or even last over yeah and it still ends in an exciting draw like the gaba test of 2021 india versus australia absolutely and something recent here yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i i'm still so I, was actually, I was actually going to ask you uh, the future of test cricket you are uh, hopeful? Uh, I'm not very hopeful, no. No, I'm, I'm worried that the white ball will um, encroach more into the test playing time. I'm worried that we will 
lose our best players if they sign up for a franchise. What we've seen in South Africa, yes. the franchise yes. people yes. Will, will not let them go. Yes. Yes. So all of a sudden, I know South Africa will send a side to New Zealand this year and it'll be a second yes. string. Yes. Yes. So that's what worries me. And if I think, I think somebody said, well, the only test cricket to be the Ashes. And I thought, oh, we, do, we don't want that. We really don't want that. And I think that's, yeah, it is a worry. So I don't know how, I don't know what the answer is. Um, TV are pulling the strings a little bit, as you know, and yes. we all have to face that. Yeah. Start times, finish times, um, everything else that goes with it. But it's worry, it's a worry. And uh, if you allow me to ask anything with John Lever, doesn't go without the Vaseline incident. <laughs> and Tony Gregg said it should not have happened, though it happened and you know, nothing could have done been nothing could have been done about it. How do you look back at that series and uh, do you regret or or it just happened in the flow or just happened? How do you look I, at I think I you know I, I was the one who suggested putting Vaseline here because yeah. of sweat going to Madras sweat, yeah, yeah. and we played up north and it was cold, two sweaters in Delhi. And it was hot and thinking, keep the sweat out my eyes. And I went to Ben, I said, have you got any of that? I played a lot of football. And he said, no. So I said, OK, not, not a worry, we'll carry on. And then the next day, he'd, he'd asked somebody to look for some. And they came back with this gauze that was impregnated. So Bob had it. It wasn't just me. You know, Bob had it on and, and I had two bits and he had one bit. And he bowled the first ball and it went like that. And he, I've had enough of this. And yeah, at the at the end of the day, it, it was a it was a bit of a blow to you know when I mentioned I did nine years apprenticeship That's learning because right. mm -hmm. I as I started out as an outswing bowler, I wanted to be quick. I wanted to be like Dennis Lilly, mm -hmm. and I was never going to be that quick. Right. But to bowl quick, you tend to lose that risk, fall away just to get that extra pace. So I had to go in the nets and work on staying up straight and keeping the wrist in here, keeping the wrist behind the ball. So I thought I'd learn my apprenticeship to swing it. Um, and dear old Bish was under a bit of pressure. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the thing that hurt me was to him to say he'd never swung it like that in England. I got 1,750 first class wickets in England. I didn't get that by bowling straight balls. So. I had one of those things. When it just, um, I thought it was going to be a more of a problem when we went on to Australia. I thought they might sort of say something, but you know, nothing was said there at all. Um, I don't know. I don't, everybody can um, make up their own mind, but I, I think I was lucky not just to swing the ball but in that first test match, I got four LBWs. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And that was Indian umpires. Yeah, that's what, yes. and, <laughs> and it wasn't a panel umpire. So uh, that, everything went for me. I even got a few runs. So everything was, was, going, was going my way. Poor old Bish passed away. I know, I know, I know. We, we shook hands in the end. Okay, I, was, okay. I was upset with him. Uh -huh. I was upset with okay. him because I felt it was... It was my art that he was questioning. Mm -hmm. But in the end, I saw him in England and we shook hands and we said, okay. Okay. it's all gone, there's no point being enemies now. So yeah. that was good. Mm -hmm. So you just, you just thought it just happened and just passed on, isn't it? Yeah, I, I don't think there was... I, Vaseline doesn't swing the ball, so okay. there, was no, there was no help there at all. Okay. All it does is stop you gripping it, okay. which uh, wasn't going to help. Mm -hmm. Nice talking to you, Mr. Lever. Uh, 